Hey there everyone, welcome to this video on brewing compost tea using your vermi compost or worm castings. Um, I first got turned on to compost tea after watching the movie Biggest Little Farm where they basically rehabilitated this giant, dry, sun-scorched uh, Southern California farm by using uh, cover crops and compost tea. And from that moment on I was like, okay, hook me up. And uh, this book here by Eric Fisher goes into great detail on all the different uh, brews and uh, soil science. I highly recommend it. Uh, so check it out. Yeah, so we're making our uh, compost tea using vermicompost. And vermicompost is a compost system using worms to break down uneaten food and uh, detritus and leaf matter and whatnot and today we're gonna add uh, juice pulp one of my favorite things to give the worms because um, it's more broken down and the more broken down the thing is that you give to the worms the f quicker they convert it into castings which is awesome also have some coffee grounds in here which help them uh, clear their intestinal tracts they recommend that you include your coffee grounds it's one of the things they love um, and there's ginger, beets, carrots, uh, greens, um, like kale and, uh, purple collared pulp in there. These are my worm tower, the worm tower on the right. And then the sort of DIY rubber made worm housing on the left. Um, we're going to feed the worm tower top tray and that's, you can see it's fairly new. I have like a bunch of fresh coconut coir which is what I use for bedding, and that coupled with uh, paper shreds. Which if you don't have a paper shredder and you're planning on vermi composting, you should definitely get a paper shredder. It's amazing. It turns your junk mail and junk newspaper stuff into delicious compost. Black gold, they call vermi compost. This is an older tray, one of the lower trays, where it's been going for a much longer time. You can see the worms population of worms super dense here the worms are red wigglers um, those are the worms that they say like they'll eat half their weight uh, per day um, in compost um, scrap paper this is the shredded paper uh, bin that I keep nearby and try to keep dry And here's an example of the, like, this is the bottom tray. This is like completed stuff, paper. The only thing left you can see is like sort of like little plastic shreds that made it through the paper shredder, like those plastic windows and envelopes that we try not to put in our shredder, but sometimes it comes through. These are little plastic bits. Um, the compost itself, you'll know it'll be ready when you can kind of like make a, a ball out of it. It's like moist enough like that but it can also be like broken down and it should smell like fresh uh, soil like when you buy a fresh bag of soil that's that kind of fresh smell if it smells rancid it might be anaerobic and not really useful for this tea since this is all about aeration and multiplying microbes and stuff now there's a little straggler. The good thing about the worm tower is that the bottom trays usually have less worms because you're feeding at the top, so they've slowly all moved to the top, and you have less to pick out. Now, let's say you have like a tray where there are a lot of worms still. You can uh, leave it outside, and uh, in the sunlight, the worms will move away from it, go deeper, and then you can scrape that kind of quarter inch, half inch layer of compost, put it in a bucket, come back like five, ten minutes later do the same thing. That's another way to separate uh, your your compost from the worms. Here is the brewer. Growing Solutions. Um, they have a website. Um, they make brewers to like all different sizes. I think this might be the smallest one. It's 10 gallon. Maybe they have a smaller one. Anyway, here's the website. Awesome. I know there's a lot of DIY stuff out there. You can build this very easily, but the thing I like about this is all self-contained and easy to clean. And because I use it once a week, 
I rather just have this thing. It's like my coffee maker, you know? I mean, it's literally like a brewer, right? So here's the basket, the brewing basket. Pretty cool. We'll put the compost in there and it sits nicely on this lip. And these lips have these little divots here to keep things aerated. I think it's pretty nicely designed, very simple. Everything's like clunky, but it's like on by design, you know? The bottom part there is the aeration thing, which you'll see in action. It's like a big giant hockey puck. I'm trying to zoom here and here to see the tiny, tiny holes, but there's, it's impossible with this camera. Um, but you'll see it in action. You can kind of see the, the radiating lines of holes. Anyway, what we want to do is fill our 10 gallon tank and then aerate the water for like an hour or two to get rid of the chlorine before we do anything, before we add a catalyst or compost or get anything going. The stuff coming right from the city is coming in nice and clean, but we need to take out some of the uh, stuff that might knock out some of our microbes right off the bat. Um, so yeah, I'm going to plug this in. Here we go. Here's the aeration in action. The air, the pump, what I also love about this is look, this pump is like substantial and that is like a half inch hose. That's a lot of air. And the brewing process is 24 hours. So you could have a bunch of air stones in a bucket and do this, but this puppy here, look at it go. This thing is like consistent. I like it. It's like my coffee machine, but for my garden. Anyway, 10 gallon fill line. Some of the residue from previous batches, which I just scrape into the new batch. Why not? Um, and it's been an hour, probably more like two. Now we're going to add some catalyst. Uh, just like when you're baking, you got to feed those like the yeast so this is like we're feeding the microbes this is like probably trace elements and sugars and stuff so that the microbes that exist in the compost are gonna feed off that and then multiply so you're gonna go like apparently it's like seven times or ten times another thing you really want to add is uh, which I got from that Eric Fisher book is uh, kelp meal kelp is a source of 60 trace elements I mean, it's a no-brainer to add this to any of your brews for your garden. It's also got a lot of potassium, which uh, is really good for root growth, stem, strong stem growth, and uh, helps the plant um, use water properly. Um, you kind of want you to be brewing tea in, in temperatures uh, where you can, where microorganisms can uh, multiply. Uh, not too fast and not too slow. Uh, so between 70 and 80 for this 24 hour brew is what they recommend. Okay, so now that we've uh, kind of dechlorinated the water by aerating it for an hour, um, then we followed by adding the catalyst and the kelp, kelp meal to the aerating water to sort of mix up. Left that for like 15, 20 minutes. Now I'm ready to add the vermicompost. So I just added it to this basket, the hanging basket, and ready to suspend the good stuff and let it start feeding on the delicious catalyst and kelp. Uh, actually, Growing Solutions Catalyst has uh, sea seaweed in it as well, so it actually could be an all-in-one. I just read that adding more is not a bad thing. Um, here we are going to brew this uh, batch for 24 hours, but since it's kind of a weird time in the day and you want to feed near the end of the day or at the very beginning of the day so that you're not getting direct sunlight, looks like we're ready to brew and uh, just try to dull the uh, vibration here with a backpack on top of the machine. Room temperature between 60 and 80, which should be pretty good. You don't want it to be too cold or too hot. Um, so I'll be back in 24 hours. All right, so this is like 
27, 28 hours later, I took a drop of the brew and I threw it on a uh, special slide for water droplets and threw it underneath under my uh, microscope. Um, I'm not a professional or a, an actual scientist or anything, so I was just trying to capture organisms that I saw under the microscope. If you know what these are, you can throw it down in the comments. That would be much appreciated. Um, but the, one of the most amazing things about sort of aerated compost teas is that they multiply microorganisms. So aerated compost tea is really about like kind of nurturing the soil, like a tonic uh, uh, healing potion for the soil versus like anaerobic, like fermented uh, teas or anaerobic teas that sort of like you're just adding elements and stuff to the soil um so i really love this this notion of adding like thousands and thousands of microbes to your soil to improve the health and therefore improve the health of the plant the roots and the fruit and the whole while you get uh some trace elements along the way beneficial trace elements so that cannot hurt um, we have a little filter bag to filter out the bigger particles from the, uh, from the tea so it doesn't clog the, uh, water can right away. I have like a two gallon water can, which I'll get, um, so I'll probably get five trips to the compost brewer. And I'll do this like once a week in the spring and summer. Uh, feeding the trees, the raised beds. Um, house plants love this treatment. Uh, even my succulents, uh, anything really. This is Gozo. Hey, buddy. He's a little helper. He loves to help dig holes, by the way. Okay, let's add our billion beneficial microorganism army to the soil shall we uh, starting with the tomato plants I also have turmeric uh, planted you can see the little spears coming out the leaves so we've got turmeric I think I also have some herbs in there too um, so we've got beneficial microorganisms entering the soil you know I always add compost and then you want to probably add a lot of mulch as well to keep that communicate community uh, prospering create the environment for those organisms to live and thrive in and, uh, and pass on the benefits to your plants not only battling diseases but uh, making trace elements available and all that good stuff. Also treat the trees. These are one of the four avocado trees we have. Um, according to this avocado calendar, if we have these four different avocado trees, we should be able to eat avocados all year round in Southern California, zone 10. We shall see, they're all pretty young and two, three years old each. Um, you can see this like biofoam here that forms also from the brewing. This is all good stuff. I just spray this all into the yard later when I'm done. All right, now we're gonna treat this whiskey barrel planter, which has a bunch of perennials in it. This golden berry bush, the heart-shaped leaves, goji berry bush with the elliptical leaves, and then the medium kind of like leaf plant is this uh, part of the spinach family, Gynera procubin. Super healthy, super delicious. Feed more trees. I mean, compo the process of distributing compost tea just soothes the soul, people. Especially house plants. Like this fiddle leaf fig, I feel like, loves it. Where else is it going to get beneficial microorganisms from? You know what I mean? It's not going to get it just from tap water. And uh, so we give, uh, here's our Monstera Deliciosa. We give that a little 
compost tea treatment. I think it enjoys it as well. I mean, it, there's it's a very healthy plant. The um, the leaves don't have any browning or any the tips aren't any aren't dry or any other color. The the breakup in the leaves are amazing. I think I think it's happy. There's our squeaky little garden hose. Um, and just spraying the biofoam into back into the yard. You know, adding uh, beneficial microorganisms to the soil. Any chance we get, that's what we should all be doing on this planet. You know, trying to keep soil as healthy as possible. Healthy soil means that we'll all be healthy, our food supply and whatnot. So this leftover vermicompost I just throw into uh, my garden composter. Um, but you can add it around plants or trees if you want as well. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video helped. Um, be sure to check out um, the video garden tour of the where you can get the lay of the land and uh, check out our edible food forest in good old zone 10. Alright, be well. Peace.